There are so many options when it comes to flooring these days, and once you decide your flooring material, you've got even more options for adding pattern to your design. Don't be overwhelmed, though, because Brian Gluckstein is here, and he's going to help us out. Brian, you love to add pattern to your flooring designs. Tell us why that is. Well, I like to add the visual interest. I mean, you don't want to neglect the floor, and, and if you're doing a new floor, think outside the box. So if you're using, you know, a tile or a wood, you don't have to just lay it in the standard ways, which are beautiful and classic, and we'll talk about that, but you can shake it up a little bit also to add more interest. Okay, I love it. Show us some of the examples you have there, Brian. I have the most gorgeous things you can't believe. This is all from a company called Stone Tile, and I love them because they have all these different materials. And, and Tracy, look at these. Okay, so mm -hmm. the first one is what's called a chevron. And a chevron is where you have this line down the center and all the pieces meet like a V. And I'll show you what the difference is between herringbone in a minute. This is in a beautiful sort of classic brown walnut color. Look at this color. We're seeing a lot of this color, that Northern European, that Belgian look. This is the typical way you would lay it, but often you can do bigger planks. So think about using bigger sizes also for hardwood, because you can go really big up to you know eight inches. And when you're looking at patterns like this, really think about where they're going. If you're gonna put a huge area rug covering most of the room, you know, don't use the chevron there. Use the chevron maybe in the kitchen, the hallway where it's not covered. Now look at this one. This is gorgeous. Look at this charcoal gray. This is vinyl. The oh. vinyl today is so unbelievable. The texture, when I am running my hands across these, I can't tell the difference. The beauty of this can go anywhere. Great for basements, great for kitchens, even in bathrooms. Now this one is a Versailles pattern, and the Versailles patterns, there's a few different types, but they are typically in these squares, and you lay these squares. Some have herring bones in the middle, or basket weaves in the middle. Believe it or not, Tracy, this is porcelain. This is one porcelain tile. Just feeling it, I can't believe it. When I'm feeling it, it has the texture of wood. It has that matness of wood. It's incredible. So when it comes to pattern and wood, there's so many constructions you can use. Just Not just pattern, but constructions also. Gorgeous. Vinyl and porcelain have come a long way. Okay, let's talk about adding pattern using stone. With stone... Now that you can use natural stone, which we have here on the floor, or you can use porcelain stones. We're using porcelain more and more, and the porcelain looks so real. One is it has the texture, and um, it comes in very large formats. So you can get small patterns if you want to do, again, the herring bones and things like that, or you can use large format that actually look like slab. And the veins are great, and the great thing about a lot of these porcelains is it's not just one pattern. They have multiple, so it's not the same vein all the way over. It looks quite random. The beauty of porcelain also is the color goes through. So different than ceramic tile, if you chip a ceramic tile, you get that clay color, that orange color underneath. With a porcelain, it's a, a through color, so it's very practical, but again, um, you can use stone in large format, or you can lay these in all different ways. I love laying these 12 by 24 and herring bones also. It's a great product. But again, great for kitchens, great for foyers, great for mudrooms, great for bathrooms, great for everything. And you can get them in a variety of price points. So you can get modestly priced porcelain and you can get porcelain that's the same price as natural stone. Okay, so what, yeah, what would you say the cost difference might be between the hardwood and the stone? Well, the, the installation of the stone is more because you are laying a setting bed first and then you're laying the tile down. Um, it really depends. They can be the same. It depends on the quality of the product. So you can get herringbone that's very modestly priced for, you know, three or four dollars a foot. And then you can get uh, hardwood and you can get hardwood that goes up to 15 or 20 dollars a foot. Okay, let's take a look at some of these stone patterns. Let's look at the uh, penny tile and the octagon tile. Okay, so penny tile, this one is actually a, um, a ceramic tile, 
This is a classic tile. This looks great in bathrooms if you want that retro look, if you want a 20s look, or more a mid-century look. It also looks good in a kitchen on a backsplash. I love this here. Now in octagon, we know the little octagon tiles that you see in old houses that were built <laughs> in the 30s and 40s, even the 20s. Well, octagons have come a long way because here it is mixed with uh, different colors. So you can do an octagon in the small pattern if you want that retro look. And then a cooler way is if you mix it up um, with the different colors of stone. And this is a natural stone. It comes 12 by 12, so it all locks in together. It's on a mesh background, so um, it looks like each piece was laid separately, but it's really on mesh, and they just all lock together. Ooh, nice. And I remember growing up with those patterns for sure. Next, you've got some basket weave for us. Yes, the basket weave, if you look at it here, this is the classic, classic floor you see in old houses at the early part of the 20th century. We're seeing a lot of it again, and the, it, the look of it and the effect you're going to get depends on the color. This is the classic deco, black and white, looks great with white fixtures, chrome faucets, things like that. You can do this in limestone, you can do this in grays and white, you can do it in all white. Again, a classic floor. It's great for bathrooms because of the small format, it is not so slippery because you have all those grout lines. The porcelain also, if you get a porcelain stone that has that texture, great for bathrooms because it's not slippery. But small format tiles are perfect perfect for bathrooms when it comes to slipping because you can take that right into the shower. And would you ever use that for a backsplash? This would be great in a backsplash and again you can use it in it comes in so many different colors. It comes in natural stone, it also comes in ceramics also that look like natural stone. Very nice. Okay, back to herringbone which is probably my favorite. Uh, you've got that in tile form as well, don't you? Yes. So when I was talking about the chevron here that goes into a V, the herringbone locks in together. You can see the way it steps together. So that's the difference. People often say, what's the difference between a chevron and a herringbone? These overlap, these meet in the center. So you get that center line that goes all the way through. Again, a very classic um, pattern. You can do that in any material. You can even get, if you get a ceramic tile that's a rectangular shape, any size, you can lay it in a herringbone. This again comes like this in 12 by 12 uh, sheets on mesh and you just fit them together. But you can lay as big as the 12 by 24 in herring bones. You can get small individual tile and lay them in herring bones. I just love it. I think it's just such a classic, classic pattern. Oh, I love it too. Every time I step into a space with herring bone, I'm like, oh, it just looks so good. It looks so <laughs> luxe. I love it. Brian, thank you 